So this update is going to be pretty structured. Um, usually we run it over, so we tried our best to make sure that this is very succinct and structured. Um, so we'll get started right away. Uh, the first step is going to be actually from Kelly to give uh, updates on community managers. We have some new members here. Um, so if she can do a quick intro and hopefully uh, the community members that are here can uh, do a quick introduction about themselves, that would be great as well. Um, and we'll get things kicked off. Kelly, take it away. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, so the foundation has concluded our search for community managers. Uh, just wanted to take another second to thank everyone who expressed interest. We have so many talented people, um, and I'm just really grateful for the Ironfish community. So thank you so much to all of you. With that, I would love to introduce you to the three people that were selected. Um, so Edwin, if you want to come up on stage and give us a brief intro, um, and we would love to welcome you first. Uh oh, do we have technical difficulties? <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Edwin, uh, aka Dirty Miner. Uh, just happy to be here. Uh, a little bit about myself. I like math, uh, quantum computing, I like crypto. Yeah, just really excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we noticed uh, Edwin slash Dirty Miner was really helpful in our Discord. Um, he was a person who consistently was helping people, uh, not only technical, uh, with technical questions, but also concept questions about Ironfish or anything about the team. So really excited to have him on board. Uh, he's been really helpful so far in our community already. And so it's really great to kind of make it more official um, and to have him work with us. Uh, at a more kind of official capacity. So thank you so much, and please welcome Edwin to the team. Woo. Yeah, so happy to have you with us, Edwin. Thank you. You'll see Edwin in the general channels and also in some of the specific language channels as well. Um, and with that, I'd love to invite Roman up to give us a quick intro about yourself, Roman, um, who's another one of our new community managers. Yeah, hello. I'm Roscoe, and I'm glad to become part of the Ironfish team. Uh, from today, I will help with the development of the Russian-speaking community and will also answer questions in the main English language channels. You can uh, rally on me. Together, we will, achieve, we will achieve a lot. Listen, thank you so much, Roman. We're super happy to have you here. Um, and then is Johnny in the audience? We would love to have you come up as well, Johnny, if you are here. Not sure if Johnny made it. It's very late for him. So um, just give you a quick intro on Johnny. He will also be joining us as um, community manager, and he will be specifically managing the Chinese speaking community channels. Um, and we are very glad to have him on. And obviously, we will see him in the general channels as well. And just very excited to have um, all of these new people on board who can really help facilitate in the Ironfish community. Awesome. And with that, um, yep. great. I was just going to hand it back to you. So perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Cool. All right. And with that, we're going to move on to our next update, which is the white paper. Um, I have been dragging my feet on the white paper. The contents of the white paper are actually up in a branch. Uh, it just needs to be kind of finalized and all the links need to be fixed. <laughs> uh, but the con content is actually up there in, in, a, in a separate branch. Um, I'm just going to commit myself to doing it today because it's basically 99% of the way there. Um, so that is kind of where the progress is there. So super excited about that. Um, hopefully we can do some subsequent follow-ups in the white paper, kind of explain to people more how the um, Ironfish protocol works in maybe other media forms. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. But if people are dying to read it, then it is actually in a feature branch. <laughs> um, all right. Next up is Hacker One updates from Jason. Hello, everybody. Um, so we actually let our Hacker One program, which is our bug bounty program for you to report bugs and to be paid um, for your research and work. Um, so we let it expire uh, for a couple reasons, uh, but Hacker One was not fitting our needs. For one, it 
had a variety of issues that I'm not going to go into, uh, but mostly the platform uh, is also kind of closed, which we didn't like. Uh, so you can't actually look at the bug bounty program unless you sign up and you're approved. So it's kind of like a walled garden. Um, that, among a lot of the other issues that they had with just getting spammed by a lot of just Web2 security reachers that weren't familiar with, you know, Web3 or crypto, uh, people that had no idea what our product did was just kind of made us decide to move off the platform. We do still want to reward you. Um, and as a reminder, we actually have paid out cash for one security report on HackerOne. So it is a program that we're actually very interested in. So we're looking at a couple alternatives now. Uh, the primary uh, thing that we're looking at right now is actually called ImmuneFi. Um, I think it's actually beneficial over the traditional Web2 solution for a number of reasons, but it's open. You don't have to sign up for an account to start looking at the bounties. Uh, but also the cash that we pay out moves into a public vault on Ethereum that you can actually see how much is in there. So you know that the money is there to be paid out. So it's actually like a bit more reputable and trusted by crypto people in a number of ways. So we're starting to investigate this and we'll most likely move to ImmuneFi. So just keep out for more news on that. And we want to just pay smart people who want to help out and find security issues. Thank you. And um, I'm going to hand it off to Daniel, who's going to talk about the hashing algorithm. And I already know lots of people in this chat are asking about it. Hey, thanks, Jason. Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't, hasn't been following, we're switching over to a memory hard proof of work hashing algorithm, which a member of our community, Lolly Diev, is currently working on. We have a proposal up on Discourse from Lolly Diab, and he's working on the implementation right now. I'll post the Discourse proposal in the chat. And someone asked about whether both AMD and NVIDIA would be supported, and yes, it, both of those GPUs would be supported in the first implementation, and we would Lolly Diab is working on an open source implementation as well. If you're curious about the timeline, so we don't have a set timeline right now for when the algorithm will reach testnet or mainnet, but we invited Lolly Diab to the next minor call, and I think he'll be able to give a more update on like how far he's gone in the open source implementation. So if you want to join that, right now it's scheduled for next Tuesday at 7 a.m. PST. But I think we're going to change that time so that Wally Diab can more easily join. So um, look out in the mining channel for update on when that might be changed to. So I'm going to pass it off now to Matt to talk about network improvements. There we go. Sorry. Thank you, Daniel. I uh, couldn't find my unmute button. So we've been working on uh, some network improvements recently that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, one of the first things that we, and the, everything I'm going to talk about has already been shipped in the latest version of the CLI. Um, I think it will be in the next version of the Node app. Um, but I'll let Derek talk about that in a minute. Um, so one thing that we have shipped is an improvement to block syncing. And how it works is uh, you will your node will regularly try to find a faster peer to sync from so that if you get stuck syncing from a slow peer, um, you're not just like stuck there. It will eventually try to find a faster peer, which should lead to much faster syncing times for people who have like better connections than uh, they're able to use with their current sinker. Um, secondly, we've made some improvements to the um, peer addresses that we store on disk, uh, which means that when you start your node for the first time, or after you restart your node, you will reconnect to more peers much faster. You won't have to go through the bootstrap node. You'll, you have a, a pool of peers that you know are good that you will connect to right away. Um, this leads to much faster 
gear saturation, which is great. Um, we've also made a number of other like smaller improvements around just finding peers faster. Um, I'm not going to go through each specific one, but generally you should be able to find peers much faster than before. Um, I'm actually able to reach 50 peers in, you know, uh, like 10 or 15 minutes in some cases, uh, which is fantastic. That's a huge improvement over what we, what we used to have. Um, and we're going to continue working on more stuff. Um, that's just what's been shipped already in the latest release. So if you have not upgraded yet and you're using the CLI client, I highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, next I will pass it over to Derek, who's going to talk about the Node app. Hey, everybody. So Dan and uh, Daniel and I have been working on um, kind of a total, total overhaul of the Node app. Um, so as we got towards the end of developing the first uh, kind of beta version of the Node app that's out right now, um, we realized that a lot of the back end, like the code that connects the Ironfish node with the UI for it, um, was going to be really hard to maintain. And every time we tried to upgrade the internal Ironfish node version, um, it was breaking in ways that were pretty hard to detect. So um, we knew at that time that we wanted to kind of redo that integration so that we used the RPC layer um, and it worked a lot uh, similarly to the CLI. Um, and so we didn't want to hold up the initial release of the Node app to do that. Um, but now that the Node app uh, kind of initial version is out and we've crushed a lot of the bugs with that, um, we started work on this um, second version. And as part of that, we're doing kind of an overhaul of the UI. Skyler's done some great new designs um, since the initial version. So we're implementing those as well. Um, and the benefit is that it's uh, a lot, lot less code, um, which will let us add stuff a lot easier. Um, and will also uh, allow people that work on like the CLI, for example, um, to add stuff into the Node app easier. Um, it won't require as much like learning to figure out how to add things there. So um, it's a little bit of effort now uh, in order to make it easier for us to keep the Node app up to date going forward. Um, and it'll also have the benefit, I think, of bringing some nice clean designs uh, that are a bit more responsive and cleaning up general like small UI things like um, what's displayed when you're syncing um, and how the snapshotting process works. So uh, the repository, repository for that is open source right now. Um, it's ironfish dash node app instead of just dash node app. It's not ready for release yet, um, but if you're interested in kind of taking a peek at a preview yourself, um, feel free to check that out. Um, we'll be sure to make an announcement when we're ready to release it when it's uh, feature complete with the existing Node app. And what we're planning on doing is uh, we'll push an update to the existing Node app that'll display some sort of banner that says, um, hey, you need to uninstall the existing Node app and then download the new version. And we'll, of course, update the links on the site and all that and make Discord announcements and all that as well. Um, but yeah, we don't have a release date at this time. Um, we're still working on implementing all of the features, but um, we're making great progress and really excited um, about the new version. So look forward to that. Uh, next up, I think Rohan is going to talk about the uh, simulator uh, that he's been working on a little bit. I'll hand it over to him. Yep, yep. thanks, Derek. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk uh, about two projects. So the first one I want to talk about is the simulator fish tank. I think Andrea has mentioned this in some previous updates, but if you're not familiar, the fish tank uh, is a project that we're using to simulate and test the ironfish ecosystem. So you can configure and arbitrarily run large ironfish networks, and it won't affect mainnet or testnet. It's going to run in a like completely isolated environment. And this is extremely useful because if we plan for large changes or hard forks, uh, they won't cause any regressions, and we can battle test all our changes before shipping it out to mainnet. So this project is, I would say, almost complete. We have one or two small features that we're trying to get in before uh, marking it as com like fully complete. We're going to do some um, Docker builds for ARM chips that uh, still need to be fixed. Uh, we're still seeing some issues with that, but hopefully this is wrapped up probably by like in the next like two or three weeks. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is a project which we have not started development in, but we're starting research in, and this is multi-signature wallets. So this is a pretty common feature that you see in other wallets across different chains. 
Um, so single signer models are when wallets maintain their own private keys and you only need one signature to sign a transaction and then broadcast it. Uh, for multi-signature wallets, this will require more than one signature. So you can have a trusted dealer who distributes keys or you can have participants uh, getting together and they do multiple rounds and aggregate their signatures and then sign a transaction. So again, this is still in the research phase, but this is something that we're going to uh, look into. The other thing that I wanted to mention related to wallets is we've been seeing some interest in uh, password protection or private key encryption for wallets. So this is under consideration for right now. We don't have any updates on this yet, but if we do start working on it, we'll be sure to let the community know. Um, cool, yeah, I think next up is back to Elena to talk about some grants. Um, yeah, we still have some grants in process that I talked about last time. Uh, we're moving those along. Um, they're in different stages. Uh, I think the feedback that we got last time was that we need to make our grants process a, a bit more transparent so we have more people apply because right now it's kind of unclear in terms of like we ask people to apply and then we kind of, we kind of ask them to, uh, to put the dollar amount in there. Um, so we are going to be kind of restructuring it a little bit so that we can give it in terms of ranges um, so people can understand uh, what they should expect back for the type of work that they might offer to do. <laughs> And hopefully that that'll get more people to apply um, so that we, you know, so they, they can actually see more transparently what they might be getting back. So that's that's some work on us. Um, but yeah, in terms of grants, um, still the same ones. We're still working with Lil Idea and Fox Wallet um, and CK Work and Fish Guy and so on. Um, so if you have an idea for a grant, uh, you know, firstly, please use the grants process as is if it's uh, something that you think is really exciting and what we usually do is we just reach out to you on telegram directly and then we kind of have a um like just a conversation about what the grant is and what the scope is and we kind of narrow it down um so even we understand that this process maybe not is not perfect for for everyone but if you have an idea don't let that stop you um as we're moving towards that um please use the existing process as well um so again this could be uh, anything that uh, directly benefits Ironfish. Um, so for instance, we are giving some grants for people who are going to be helping with the hashing algorithm, like Lolidea, but we're also giving some grants for people who um, are kind of known in the mining community um, and are uh, offering their time to test or audit the hashing algorithm. So if you're one of those people, uh, please reach out to us. Um, and then don't be shy, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're here, uh, if you have an idea and you're unsure about what, to, how much to even ask for it, um, just go ahead and submit the grant so we can start the process. And, and then again, we can, we can talk to you directly about, um, about the work that you're doing, um, and so on. So, um, great. So I think we're, we're actually a little bit under time, which is rare. Usually we go over by a lot. <laughs> um, so I think that is it in terms of. All the content that we wanted to cover. Um, I'm looking through the chat. I think we've answered all the questions that are in the chat as we went along. Um, and yeah, cool. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, we can go ahead and end this a, a little bit early. Um, thank you all so much for joining. I hope you all have an awesome Friday. Um, crypto is never boring. There's always something happening. Um, and, uh, and thank you again for being part of this community and, you know, being here and asking us questions and running our fish nodes and believing in our mission of privacy. Um, we're continuing to be really passionate about what we're, what we're building and it's really encouraging to, to see everyone here. All right. And with that, we're going to close it off. Thank you all so much. Please have a wonderful Friday. Um, and we will see you in discord. And welcome to our new community members. Awesome. All right. Bye, everyone.